All right, game week. Finally got here. Um, it's been a good preseason, though. I, I like the way our guys work. Uh, I like the way our coaches have been coaching. It's, it's fun to see the new staff members and their personalities coming out. And um, I think it, it's uh, been really good. You know, we started our preparation for this game on Friday. Uh, we got a, about a three-quarter practice in Friday. Worked really hard yesterday on, on our grind day. Uh, then we'll go today with the same normal Wednesday practice. And then tomorrow we start cutting back as far as the volume goes on their legs, but uh, more meeting time, walkthroughs, more of the mental preparation. But uh, it, it is also good that, that we have the experience because they've been through game week. Uh, you know, a year ago it was everything was new to them, what we do on mo Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, so these guys have been through that, and, and that should help us on our, in our teaching and, and getting prepared for the game. Um, you know, what I want to get out of the game is to see us come out and execute, uh, which means do their job, do what they're asked to do, work their technique and their fundamentals, and then play with great effort, um, play in and play out. And that, that's what you want to see is guys, what we call effort habit. We, we need a team that has an effort habit and plays hard every play. So with that, I'll just open it up for questions. Is there a moment in camp when you kind of realize, OK, they're ready, they're ready for a game, or OK, they need a game? Yeah, it's probably more that it's time to play a game. It's time <laughs> to quit hitting each other. And you know, uh, I guess if there's one moment that sticks out, it, it would have been when we're in our last scrimmage and um, guys are getting a little testy. A little temperament flying up that uh, and, and a couple guys usually that aren't that way and it's like okay we're tired of hitting each other let's get ready for a game and start preparing for it and um, so that that's probably the one thing that that always seems to come up is you get tired um, it's hard work and you're tired of going against the same guy every day in practice and you know every once in a while they get a little testy about it but uh, it's also a great teaching moment because you know, it would have been a couple guys uh, would have been out of the game and, and out the first half of the next game. So um, you kind of let it play out and see it as a coach. And I learned a long, long time ago, don't jump in the middle of any of that. No reason to get hit, knocked down. Uh, you just kind of watch it and then use it as a teaching moment on what would have happened if that was in a game. Um, you know, if we were going right now, if we were walking out there right now and kicking, that's how it would be. Mason's had a, a very good camp. His times <laughs> on getting the ball out are very, very good. Uh, his hang time and his distance has been uh, consistent. And I, I, I'm proud of the way he worked at it and how, how much more he's improved from spring. Uh, Austin Johnson's a really good punter. He's going to be a, a very, very good punter. Uh, he's a two-step guy that, that uh, has the ability to have great hang time and distance. But Mason, um, you know, got the edge in this, this battle, so uh, he'll get the nod. And then Evan, I thought, is just his consistency, uh, his ability to get the ball up high and, um, you know, gives us the range that, you know, right now you feel like if we get the ball around the 32, 31-yard line, we've got a chance to get three points on the board. So, um, you know, we've had years where it's been the 26 or the 20, you know, seven. But I feel if he, we get it to the 31, we we got a chance to get three points on the board. If, it's, if it is Evan, will he be the kickoffs as well? He, he will start as the kickoff guy too. Yeah. Coach, you, uh, Stacey Thomas is listed as a starter. Is he yeah, he's, he's recovered. He's been out there and, and going full speed. And again, uh, don't get all caught up in Rocco's depth chart. Not mine. <laughs> okay? But we still practice today. We still practice tomorrow. Um, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got guys that we have to see if they're full speed, ready to go. But Stacy is recovered. He's been out there. He's had contact. He's... He's looked good, sharp. He's a very, very good football player that's been, you know, doing a lot of things for us besides being the starter the last couple years because he's been behind James Burgess. 
Um, but he was able to back up James. He was able to back up Keith. He knows, actually he knows three linebacker spots and is a guy that we really know is going to contribute and, and have a good year for us. So we're just really happy that he's back healthy and, and full speed and ready to go. How much did he end up missing and, and is he back to where he was before he did? Yeah, I mean, we haven't played yet, so we, we'll see how that goes. But uh, as far as his speed, his agility, his flexibility, uh, yeah, he looks like he's back ready to go. But, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just proud how, how hard he's worked at it. And, uh, you know, I think we're lucky that um, our training staff stays in the, in the same facility that our players. So we got them to a, a great um, doctor and in a hurry and, and everything got taken care of correctly. No matter if it's your depth or a rock, is it really this year kind of not matter even more because you have so much depth and you move guys. I mean, you could start a tight end in the eighth back or, you know, Josh could start in the down. So it kind of really doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, I mean, what you have is different personnel groups. So, like, um, even the other day when, when Rocco was wanting to get a depth chart so you'd have something to write about, that's what he said. I said, why, why do I need to put out a depth chart? He said, well, they need something to write about. <laughs> I'm kidding, actually. I think I said that. <laughs> but anyway, um, I said we have basically 13 starters on offense because it just depends on what personnel group we're in. If we're going to start two tight ends in the game or a tight end and fullback or three wide receivers, you know, there's basically 13 guys that are starters on, on offense. And, you know, even though it doesn't mean that much to me, it means that to their mom and their dad and the, and the players that, you know, they're listed as a starter. So that's, that's why we put offense that way. And defensively, you basically what you do is you just list a base package um, because you want to make them work too. <clears throat> You know, they need to find out, okay, who's substituting in on this defensive package, who's substituting in this defensive pass package. You know, I always love it when I open up a depth chart and it lists who their nickel is. Okay, good. I don't have to study film for 10, 15 minutes to figure out what number came in the game. You know, because that's what you need to know offensively is we have a guy up in the box that just watches their sideline and see which numbers are coming into the ball game so we know what package we're, we're going against. Uh, we've changed a little bit on our conditioning, you know, on, on running a little bit more and, and uh, working harder at making sure we're in good shape. Um, we had to balance that with making sure we didn't do too much with the heat and humidity because actually in the last three years, this is certainly the hottest and, and most humid that we've had. Um, so we, we didn't get to run as much as I wanted to, uh, but we did practice at a very high tempo and, and did a lot of more a lot more game speed activities, you know. Even our scrimmages were run the clock, 40 second clock, play it like a game, special teams. Um, so I feel good about where we're at um, conditioning wise. Um, no, nah, probably not. Probably not. You know, we know they're a, they're a fast tempo offense. They've got a good running back. Uh, you know, we know a little bit about their quarterback. We go back to, you know, I can remember watching his video in high school and talking to him on the phone, recruiting. And, um, you know, he's a, a kid that I have a lot of respect for because I watched him so much in high school and, and his ability. Uh, I didn't watch him much when he was at Miami because um, we never had any matchups with him then. But uh, he's a good football player. Defensively, they're going to give us a ton of looks. You know, they have a very multiple defense. They sometimes line up in a 3-4 look, sometimes in a four-man front. They even run some what we call 3-3 stack. Um, they've shown games where they really want to pressure and some games where they don't want to pressure. So, you know, you going into the first game, it's okay. What, what you tell your team is we're going to have to make adjustments as the game goes on. We need to get over on the sideline. We need to be able to draw up, picture in your mind what the coach is telling you and get smarter and get better as the game goes on. So like every day when I walk down the hallway and I ask, were you in class today? How'd class go today? I always say to them, did you get smarter? 
you know, because that's why you're here going to college is to get smarter. Well, that's what we're going to have to do as the game goes on is get smarter as it, as it goes on. Uh, not one that I know of right off the top of my head. You know, I'm, I think there's a lot of questions. You know, how well are we going to run the ball? How well are we going to protect? Um, are we going to be able to execute with the type of timing that we want offensively? You know, defensively, are we going to be able to get some production and, and, and uh, pass rush from our inside guys to make up for a first team, first round draft <laughs> pick? You know, how are we going to rotate them in there to do that? So, yeah, there's a lot of questions, uh, but not just one particular. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no question about it. We, we know our players. Uh, they know the schemes that we're running. And uh, now it's time to cut it loose and go use your technique within the schemes and execute at a fast tempo. That, that's really what we want to see. Yeah, I think so. You know, they've gelled well. They're working hard together. Tobias done a good job with the calls and, and communicating. You know, Keola and Khalil are, are two very talented guys, tough, physical, can really run. Um, and then our tackles are, are very talented. Kenny Thomas has had a really good camp. He's going to challenge for reps and, you know, he'll rotate in and make sure he plays a lot in this first game. Because um, I've, I've really liked what I've seen from him. Um, you know, we talk all the time about Schiller and and, uh, and uh, Robbie about playing center, but um, Nathan's also playing some guard for us. Uh, so we've rotated him in at, at guard and center, which I think is, a, is something that has helped us a little bit. Um, Linwood Foy is very, very talented. He's just learning, though. You know, he, he reminds me a lot of Keola and Khalil last year, where it's all new to me. Do we really have to practice this hard? You know, do I really have to know all that much? And, uh, but he keeps getting better each day in practice. So that, that's been good to see. Corner spot in the morning is getting a little nicked up uh, in the camp. It looked like Jair and Tremaine were the guys to bring that. Special. Yeah, like I said, we got two days of practice left, and there's good competition going on there. Um, so we'll see how today and, and tomorrow goes. But uh, I do feel good, like we have four corners that can get in there anytime and compete and play. And, you know, we keep developing and, and getting better there. Yeah, he's had a really good camp. You know, he's, uh, he was really inconsistent in spring. Uh, what you did see from him in spring was a, a big physical guy that was tough and, and a great tackler. Um, and he needed to learn the coverages and the, where his help was and just the intricacies of playing that position. And I think he did a great job. And he's had a, a very good fall for us. Boy, I hope so. You know, you, you probably don't even know how hard it was to, to walk in the locker room. It was like, well, every year I've been the head coach, with the exception of last year, I walk in and I have one person in the locker room that I'll come up to and say, okay, if we win the toss, we take the ball. If they defer, we take the ball. If we have to kick, we'll defend this goal, okay? And there was a time last year where I had to walk in and say, if we win the toss, we'll defer. That's the worst feeling I've ever had. <laughs> Let's never do that again. Yeah, I'm going to have them both on the field. And uh, I think that, that they're great with the communication that we'll have down there. And uh, they've worked great together. You know, Coach K has been in the offense and, and uh, understands not just the offensive line, which is really good. And Lonnie's brought some new things in and, and made us better as an offense. And his energy and toughness and um, demanding, uh, I think, has really helped. Allows me to be a nice guy. I don't have to be the hard guy out there anymore. He's had a good camp, you know. He's doing a nice job with uh, 
He's harder on himself now. He expects more from himself as far as his drops, his sets, his accuracy. Uh, that's really fun to see, you know. Um, it was a really fun moment yesterday when we're in practice and Juwan's up taking a rep and Lamar's back there. And I walk by and I hear him talking and he's telling about, well, if this linebacker does this, this is what we're going to do if he does that. Um, a year ago, he would have been on a knee drinking water trying to catch his breath. Um, so he's focused and learning when he's not in there taking the rep and they're communicating together, standing behind. And um, that was really good to see. Because Charlotte is so multiple, would that be a good test of what he's learned? The three yeah, it's great, you know. And, you know, usually they'll probably try to come after us. You know, try to, you know, give him some different looks and bring pressure. And uh, so it'll all be good to, to uh, see what happens. You're pretty positive about your running game. Still feeling that way? And any faces? Uh, possibly. You know, Brandon's done a really nice job. Uh, we really like LJ as far as his ability to run the ball, catch the ball, pass protect, knowledge. He's probably the most knowledgeable guy out there on the field besides our quarterback as far as knowing everything about the package. Jeremy has had a really good fall camp. You know, uh, I got on him one day because he didn't have a long run in one of our live sessions. And it was the first time he's, he's not had a long run in any scrimmage we've ever had here. So he's, he, he always shows the ability to break a long run, even in the games last year he did that. Uh, Malik Williams has gotten into some of the rotation. He's uh, very talented. He's fast. He's he's what you call a home run hitter. So he doesn't. He, you might not have to call as many plays when you hand him the ball or catches the ball out of the backfield. And but he's still just learning, you know. So it's it's a, how much can he do and um, you know and what type of package can we use him in? Do you have a pretty good idea at this point of who you would like to redshirt? Yeah, it stays going. What you you know what you do is you try to prepare them to play, and uh, make sure they get ready to play, and then see what happens and see who stays healthy, who doesn't stay healthy, and you know where you're at. It's it is a long season. You know, a long time ago when they moved the games up, um, it was supposed to be a deal. It was supposed to be a deal. Okay, we'll go to 11 game schedule, and we'll give you five years of eligibility. Uh, somehow that disappeared and went away. And you know what? It should come back. With all the games we play, the ability to guys that just had five years to play, um, you could play more guys on special teams. We'd have less injuries, guys that stay healthy. Uh, I don't know why it went away. You know, when you talk about student athlete welfare, we ought to bring it back because that would be the best thing ever. How's it any different? How's it any different? No, because you're redshirting them anyway, right? So, and then if they're good, huh? No, you'd still get five years of eligibility, but only play four years. So, I don't know why, you know, why it didn't st keep keep the momentum that it had. I hope not. <laughs> now, we've had a good hard camp. It's been fun. And, uh, you know, I think that they, uh, have, they can see that it's different when you have experience and when not just me, but the position coach, the coordinators start building that connection and trust. <laughs> and, you know, it, it becomes uh, different because you value their opinion, what you see in out there, what what adjustments we need to make. Um, you always just you always do tell them that um, you know you need to make sure you're you're saying the right things, which we call taking the arrow in the forehead. You know we I I really remember um, I had one of the greatest kids ever to coach at uh, when I first got here. Uh, played guard for us, one of the most fun loving kids ever. But whenever he told you something, it was the complete opposite on video. Like, I got the Mike linebacker. He didn't get the Mike linebacker. The nose went to me. The nose went the other way. You know, so you got to 
you got to be able to build that trust where you tell me it shows up on video it, it was that way um, the coach tells you something it shows up on video that it, it was that way and then you start building a bond and you're able to make adjustments and get better on the sideline and um, I think our players are seeing that and feeling that and with, with the understanding of the schemes uh, builds more trust and more input from the players. You mentioned you were excited about the potential for big returns in the return game. What, what gives you that note? Uh, we got good returners now. I mean, those guys made plays at true freshmen when they probably didn't even know if they were going to catch the ball or not. You know, so. They're very talented. We're working really hard on our blocking schemes and our guys on doing their job blocking and teaching it. Because um, we feel like if we give them a crack and give them some room early, they've got a chance to make big, big returns for us. And, you know, besides Jair and, and Travion Samuel, um, Seth Dawkins is a guy that's a really good returner. Malik is a guy that's a good returner. Reggie's been working really hard at both punt and kickoff returns. Uh, so there's some guys back there that can handle the ball and, and make plays with the ball under their arm. Uh, yeah, we got a couple guys dinged up that tonight's really important to them and tomorrow. And obviously, we're not going to talk about it when. Our opponent doesn't know anything about it, so there's no reason for us to, to bring it up. But uh, tonight's a big night for a couple guys to see what their availability will be for Thursday. How do you decide how long tomorrow? Um, you know, just see how the game flows. You know, how the game flows, what plays he's making, you know, what the score is. I mean, there's a lot of things in there that, that determine how, how long he stays in the game. but. Uh, you know, I'd like to see him go out there and, and, you know, have some pressure put on him and him have to perform and, and make plays. So, thank you.